Well, good morning, YouTubes, and welcome back. Yes, I know if you subscribe, you will notice I have not put a video up in a couple weeks. Unfortunately, since I don't have hundreds of thousands of subscribers, <laughs> I still got to work for a living. So that's where I've been. I've been in South Texas for a couple weeks working. Um, but today, since I have gotten so many questions and so many requests of people that want to learn things, they want to learn things that are country, they want to learn farming things, they want to learn hunting things, um, I thought it would be a good idea to teach people something that has really helped build our country uh, hundreds of years ago and something that was the number one export from North America you know, back in the early 1800s uh, is fur. So today I'm going to teach you what I consider the easiest way to tan fur, put up fur, to make clothing items out of, to make different projects, hats, uh, I make shoes, um, I make puff balls for beanies for my wife and my daughters. Um, but anyway, I'm going to teach you what I think is the easiest way to do that. Now keep in mind this is not the only way to do it. It is what I consider the easiest way to do it. Now, I know there may be some professional tanners or some guys out there that know a heck of a lot more than I do, and I know there is. So don't, don't yell at me for doing it the wrong way. I'm doing it the way I know how to do it, and I'm doing what I think is the easiest way how to do it for the stuff that I want to make. So with that said, we are going to tan some bobcats, and I will show you what we're going to do here in just a second. Okay, so we've got our bobcats, and I'm going to start with this little fella here. But anyway, when a bobcat gets skinned, it gets skinned, what we call K-skinned. And it's pretty much the whole fur. It comes out like a tube. And we store it fur side out, just roll it up, put it in the freezer. And that's how we store it until we're ready to use it. But today we are going to cut it. Now a lot of guys what they'll do is they'll take this hide and they'll put it on what they call a fleshing beam and they'll flesh it on a fleshing beam. Instead, since the part I'm after is the belly because that's the prettiest part of the cat and you can see here on this big one he's really nice and fluffy. That's where all the good spots are and that's the part where all the fur people are after. But today what we're gonna do is we are gonna cut this bobcat straight down his back from his tail to his head so that he's actually able to lay out flat and I can put it on the board. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this bobcat inside out. Some of y'all may think this is gross. <laughs> But it is what it is. We're just going to turn him inside out so we've got meat to work with. And I'm not cutting the fur because what happens is if you go to cutting on the fur, you cut it uneven and you've got some edges that are messed up and they don't have fur on them. And we do not want to do that. So we're just going to get this guy turned inside out, and that's really all there is to it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take our knife or a really good pair of scissors. I like to use a knife so I don't cut the fur. And we're going to find the belly, in which you can see the belly because bellies are usually a lot thinner. But you can see, you see those spots through the belly. Okay, we're going to turn it around because we know the tail's on the back. And we're going to cut just a straight line from the tail all the way down to the head. That way when we open up, he lays flat. Okay, so, like I said, we cut him straight down the back. And this is the finished product of cutting him straight down the back. I'm going to keep the legs on. Just because in the end, it's going to give me a little bit extra to work with in case I need to oh, make something small. I just like having little scraps and stuff like that. But as you can see, we've got him opened up. Now, our next step 
is we're going to take that piece and we're going to stretch it out and nail it to that board because what you don't want this thing to do is you do not want it to dry and not be stretched because what's going to happen is if you let it dry and you don't have it stretched out then it's just going to crinkle up and you're not going to have as so much fur to work with so let's get this dude on the board and we'll get to fleshing it out so once you get him started it doesn't take much and like i said it's just a matter of stretching it every little bit and tap down what you want to do is me personally i want to make sure i get it stretched as wide as i can i'm gonna put a bunch of nails in this thing That way it's really good and tight when we go to flesh it. And by fleshing it, I mean all we're going to do is scrape any leftover fat and meat left on it from the actual skinning process. Okay, so we've got it pretty much stretched out pretty good. And don't worry if it's not perfect because there's going to be plenty of time, especially after we salt it, we're going to scrape it again. And there's going to be another time where we do some more stretching. So if it's not perfect, don't worry too much about it. We will have time to get it where we want it and stretch it out really well. So now we are going to start the fleshing process. Now you can see like with some big pieces of fat like this, you know, you can pull that right off. But what you want is a good knife. Now me personally, I do not use a traditional fleshing knife. I use a big fat bladed knife like this. It's actually a skinning knife or a gutting knife. Um, but since I don't use a fleshing beam like uh, like the, the the guys who tan hides or put fur up to send to an auction, I use a regular knife because it's a lot easier to scrape on a board like this. And what you're doing is you're not actually cutting anything. You're just scraping. And if I bring this closer to you, You'll be able to see what I'm talking about. This piece right here, you see that fat? Okay, I'm not taking the knife and I'm not cutting anything because we, we don't want to put any holes in this thing. But all I'm doing is taking it and rubbing it down. The knife isn't really that sharp. But we're just getting rid of that fat and that sinew. And we're just pulling it off of there to make this hide as thin as we can get it. And this is what you end up with. It's just chunks of fat and skin that you don't want to be on there. It's also why you stretch it out real good because you don't want that hide to be moving or bunched up then your knife will be able to 
cut through the hide. And we don't want to make that mistake. So you can see the difference right here that I've already done compared to over here. And that's all we're going to do here for a little bit. So let me get that finished up and then we'll be right back. Okay, so we have got it fleshed out about as clean as we're going to get it right now. As clean as I want to right now, but you can see there's no real big piece of meat. Don't worry about these little strands because once we salt it and it dries, we're going to scrape it some more. And we're going to get it really thin for what we're doing. You know, there's really no such thing as too thin, but you can really see where the spots are. And that is always in the belly. But our next step, we're going to take salt. And we are going to spread it all over. And you can't have too much salt. But what we're going to do is let this dry. Let that salt soak up as much moisture as it can. And we come out. It's going to be like a really hard piece of paper. So get that salt on there. Rub it in real good. Get it all the way out to the edges. Get up underneath your legs. Get it on your legs. Because we want them to dry too. You can see. I can't see right now. But I made a little mistake. Put a little cut in it. It happens. We'll sew that up before we're done. That way you never know it's there. I get my legs real good and salted. Get that done. What we'll do when we're done is we're going to let this sit for about 48 hours. By the time we come back 48 hours, this thing's going to be super dry. And we'll be able to brush that salt off of there. And then put what we're going to use to actually tan it with. Now, you don't really, if you're going to tan and you have the time, you don't really have to go through this salting process. I do because I like to do more than one hide at a time. So I like to get it salted and I like to set it, let it sit. Then I have other things to work on while it's drying. Okay, so that's that. Okay, y'all. It has been 48 hours and we've got our hide good and dry. And all the salt's dried up, the hide's nice and dry. So at this point, what we're going to do is we're just going to rub all that salt off of there. But you can see the difference from when we first started. That salt really sucked a lot of blood, sucked a lot of moisture out. Now we can start peeling these little pieces like this. And this is just all, I don't even know what you want to call it, but when these dry up and they're wet, they'll actually shrink up. And that will, that's what makes your hard, uh, your, your hide really hard, is these fibers. So we're going to do our best to keep scraping some, keep peeling as much of that off as we can, because remember, like I said, uh, if you're trying to work with it, for me personally, it can't be too thin. Too thin is putting a hole in it like that, like I did there. But we'll get that sewed up, so let's not worry about that. But anyway, I'm gonna go to scraping on this just a little bit more. And at this point, since it's really dry, we don't wanna, definitely don't wanna cut. We're just scraping to break up those fibers some more. So I'm going to do some more scraping on this, and then once I'm done, I will show you the next step. Okay. 
So we are done scraping. You can see it looks a little rough, which that's okay, because what we did by scraping it, and by really roughing it up, is we've broken the hide. And by that I mean we've broken all those little fibers that keep it stiff. And you can see before even the tannin or the oil in it, it's already pretty soft. And I could work with that right now for the things that I want to do. But as far as the tanning process goes, we have to do something to seal those hairs and set those hairs on that hide so that the hair doesn't slip and start slipping later on. So that's what we're going to do next. But first we are going to hydrate this thing. Get a little bit wet. I have no idea what to do with my water bottle. I know I just brought one out here. Okay, so we're just going to get this thing a little wet. Just trying to rehydrate a little bit because our tannin solution is going to soak in a lot better with it being a little damp. And this is just water. Just going to rub that around, make sure the hide's nice and just a little bit damp. We don't want it to be soaked. I might actually have a little bit too much, but it'll be okay. Now you can see once it's wet, you can really see how thin we got it. Got a couple little holes I need to patch up here real quick. But other than that, we did a pretty good job. So our next step is to go over here to our grocery store. And this is the part y'all are gonna like. It makes it really easy. Instead of using chemicals, you can buy store-bought chemicals and stuff like that to tan with. But we go the better route and the more natural route. We come in here and we steal some fresh eggs from the girls. I know, sweetheart. Playing all you want. I sure appreciate it. Here's all a little butt nugget layers hey they provide us what we need we can use everything natural don't have to apply no chemicals and don't have to worry about anything fresh chicken butt nuggets to the rescue now a lot of people don't use this method a lot of people don't even know about this method but egg yolks will tan fur it's not the professional way, but for me, it's the easiest way. And I guarantee for y'all, it's the easiest way. Because eggs are a heck of a lot easier to get than tannin chemicals. And it takes a lot, it's a lot quicker than going through something like a pickle process or something like that where you got to soak a hide for a couple days. The, tan, the egg yolk process is a heck of a lot easier. So let me get those mixed up and then we'll get those applied. Okay, you guys. So we've got our... Egg yolks mixed up. And now that our hide's nice and damp, we're just going to pour the egg yolks on there. Now on a bobcat this big, I'm using three egg yolks. Don't really need much more than that. On a bigger cat or a bigger piece of hide, you know, you can use four. Uh, there's several ways to do this. Uh, if you want to go natural, one is brain tanning. Uh, they say that any animal that you're going to tan has enough brain matter to tan their hide. Whether it be a cow, a deer, a rabbit, whatever it is, you take the brain out, uh, smush it all up. Mix it with some water, uh, whether you're doing it in a blender or however you're doing it. And they say that should be able to tan your hide. So we're just going to rub this egg yolk all over the hide. Get every little piece covered. I don't worry too much about my edges because I'm going to end up trimming my edges off anyway. Because they're really hard to get broken. I usually just end up taking them off. 
But anyway, we're just going to spread that all over. I'm going to need two hands for this, so I'm going to put you all down for a minute. And we'll come back when it's done. Okay, guys, so we've got that all good and covered in our egg. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take a damp towel. It doesn't have to be soaking wet, just damp. Something that's not going to completely dry out over the next two days, 48 hours. And we're just going to cover up our hide. Get pressed down on there real good. And we are going to let that sucker sit again for another two days, 48 hours. Somewhere in there. And then when we come back, it's just going to be time to wash it. And then let her dry, put a little oil on it. And it should be good and ready to start working with and get some things out of it. All right, so we've got our hide. And never mind my, my partners here. They are worried to death about what I'm doing. So now our next step is we're going to take this out. And we are going to wash it. Wash both sides. Get all the egg washed off of the hide side. And get the fur washed up real nice. And then uh, put some conditioner on it. So it comes out nice and fluffy and smooth and silky. So... Let's head out front and we are going to wash this thing. Okay guys, so we are going to start with the hide side. And all we're gonna do is just soak her down. So all we're doing is cleaning. And we're just gonna take some good old fashioned Dawn dish soap. And all you're worried about doing is getting the egg wash off. That's all we care about right now. Just by giving it a little wash, well, the spots really come out really good, don't they? But anyway, I'm going to do an extra step, and you don't have to do it, but I like to because it's just me, and I think it comes out better. But I go in the, uh, I go in the bathroom, and I steal some of the wife's hair conditioner. So, as long as she doesn't see this, then we'll be alright. Because we don't need her yelling at me for this. So, let me get that scrubbed out, rinsed off. And then we'll get to drying it out. Okay, so. We've got him all soaking wet. Now, all we're going to do is wring him out real good. Get as much water out of there as you can. Don't be afraid to twist him up a little bit. It's not going to hurt anything. That egg has already set our hair, so your hair shouldn't come out. Shouldn't slip at all. So don't be afraid to get after it. So he's still damp, but not bad. Now at this point, you've got a couple options. For me, personally, I like to go the easy route. And I've got some oil field clothes from work that I need to dry and get washed. So and I don't care if I get a little bit of cat hair on it. So I'm going to chunk him in the dryer with my clothes. And that's going to do two things. It's going to let it dry, but it's also going to tumble a little bit. 
and it's going to help keep breaking that thing up. Or you could take it like this as it is and you could put it back on your board, nail it, and stretch it and let it dry some more. But don't let it dry with the fur facing the board. So I'm going to get this dried up then you all see the finished product. Okay you guys so uh, finished product and sorry for the change of scenery but had to come back to work and make a living but uh, finished product now after I washed it I put it in the drying machine and actually dried it with heat <clears throat> after that I actually washed it in again and then I stretched it real good and dried it on a piece of plywood and then added some oil to it and then I actually washed it one more time and I dried it in the drying machine again and since then I have just been breaking it and by breaking it what I mean is rubbing it I've been personally I've been rubbing it on the edge of a piece of plywood but you can see how most of it is broke and you can see how soft it is now the actual hide you can get really soft by continuing to add some oil not a lot because you don't want it to soak through it is not waterproof <coughs> but I still need to work my edges a little bit because they're a little bit hard but we'll get to that um, I'm just going to keep breaking it on a piece of plywood or uh, anything dull but that has an edge and you can just you know work it back and forth on there and it'll break up the fibers and make it nice and soft but man, you can see how pretty it turned out it's got a lot of colors in this cat I'll try to take it outside real quick put it in some real light so y'all can see there's a lot of a lot of colors and sorry for the noise it gets a little loud around here but uh you can really see the cat had a lot of black on top of his back a lot of orange but that's uh that's all she wrote you guys um hey get out there let's uh start getting back to the way things were we can make our own stuff uh, here's the, I'm actually wearing something I've made right now. <laughs> fur lined, fur lined crop strap. Pretty sure I'm the only one with a pair. Until you all see this, then you can make your own. But uh, hey, thanks for watching, and let's get out there and make some things.